It is 8 p.m., a new report revealing a dereliction of duty within Aurora's police department. It's, it's honestly, it's shocking and it's frank, quite frankly appalling. Thousands of criminal investigations delayed due to a massive backlog. This isn't just records, this is victims that we're talking about. Denver 7 Investigates was the first to report on the issue, leaving victims without closure. There hasn't even been an attempt at justice because they haven't been investigated. Tonight we look into this searing report and what city council members are calling a quote, meltdown of leadership. This is just a, another example of the systemic failure of the leadership in our police department. Plus, what's being done to fix the problems plaguing the city for years? The only thing I can say is I'm sorry, we need to do better. Aurora police have an obligation to investigate crimes reported by the community. Well, the new report tonight shows they have not lived up to their end of the bargain. Good evening and thank you for watching Denver 7 News on Local 3. I'm Jacqueline Allen. I'm Danny New. A report obtained by Denver 7 Investigate shows more than 2,500 cases were backlogged for investigation. This includes everything from carjackings to child sex abuse and murder. Denver 7's Jennifer Kovaleski was the first to look into this report. She found that while Aurora claims to have now gotten through half of those cases, the report still uncovered thousands never investigated, leaving victims without justice. A four page report finding a massive records backlog in Aurora. 2,500 serious crimes never investigated. Cases including murder, child abuse, and carjackings going back to last year. It's honestly, it's shocking and it's frank, quite frankly appalling. City Councilman Dustin Zavonik is chair of Aurora's Public Safety Committee. He's now calling for accountability. I'm deeply concerned and I hope that there is accountability for any and everybody who's involved with not bringing this forward sooner. How does a city as large as Aurora fail to investigate more than 2,000 cases. I think we need to, to figure out what it was that led to, to this um, to this backlog. And, and for me, this is just a, another example of the systemic failure of the leadership in our police department. The report from an outside agency says the delays put the police department at an astounding risk and huge liability. It also says the backlog enabled suspects who might have otherwise been investigated and taken into custody to reoffend. What is your message to victims? The only thing I can say is I'm sorry. The city of Aurora has apparently dropped the ball uh, for, for quite a long time. Councilman Curtis Gardner says the city and police department must do better. To think that there's a murder that happened in our community that um, supposedly hasn't even been investigated yet because the record hasn't been put into the system, that's concerning. This all comes amid efforts to oust Aurora Police Chief Vanessa Wilson. Multiple sources continue to say Wilson is on her way out, but is still negotiating her exit through an attorney. Does the chief have responsibility with what happened? Absolutely, she does. Uh, in the report, it says that the police department actually knew about this problem. Wilson's attorney says Chief Wilson did not create this problem and cannot be blamed for. It. Her attorney stresses Wilson has raised this ongoing issue for a long time and has been asking for additional resources to fix it. It's just another attempt to throw mud on Chief Wilson and claim this is all her fault so they could justify terminating her. Jennifer Kovaleski, Denver 7. And Jennifer asked Chief Wilson's attorney about those ongoing talks about her future, but her attorney says it's very difficult to have negotiations when you are, quote, trying to wipe the mud off your windshield. She also questioned why this report was released today, although city leaders maintain that this report has nothing to do with the efforts to force the chief out. Meanwhile, the report was dated to last month before those conversations started. And today, Aurora City leaders from both sides of the aisle weighed in, calling the backlog troubling. But as you just heard, the attorney for Chief Vanessa Wilson maintains that this problem is one the chief stepped into and the one that's been going on for years. Today, the chief's attorney said her client's calls for help fell on deaf ears. Chief Wilson, among others, has been asking for those issues to be addressed specifically staffing, since she came on board. It does not lie at Chief Wilson's feet. And if the city council had been doing their job, they would have been aware, uh, aware of this problem long before they leaked the report that they leaked today. Aurora City Manager Jim Twombly says this report was very alarming to him as well. In a statement, he says in part, quote, the issues that identified are patently unacceptable while the consultant discusses them in terms of liability, I see them as a danger and risk to our officers and the community. Now, Twombly says they've already made some changes in response to this report. There's now a police lieutenant with prior records management experience overseeing the records office. 
all remote work has been shifted back to in person. The records office will close to the public on Wednesdays in order to focus on this backlog and police officers who are assigned to light duty will also be trained on the transcription process and temporarily fill in for the records office. And we also heard from the 17th and 18th district attorneys in a joint statement. DA Brian Mason and DA John Kellner say, quote, failures in processing police reports of new crimes or processing reports and ongoing investigations must be remedied immediately to both protect the public and the integrity of existing cases. And you can find our full reporting on both this latest audit as well as the future of Chief Wilson's job right now on the DenverChannel.com. We have a Denver 7 weather action day in effect still for these high winds. Look at this. They kicked up a whole lot of dust today near Fort Collins, even for several ski resorts to either close or shut down early. That includes Loveland Ski Area and Echo Mountain. And the winds broke a lot of our expectations with the strongest gusts topping out at 166 miles an hour in Berthoud Pass. And while those winds are technically dying down tonight, fire danger will remain high across the front range through tomorrow. But thankfully, we have Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson tracking in our Denver 7 Weather Lab. Mike, what is the latest? Well, two things. One, uh, Berthoud, properly spelled, and the number was 116, which is a little better than 166. So. <laughs> okay. Thank you for telling me that. I feel <laughs> six miles an hour better now. I feel a lot better, too. <laughs> yeah. Not just for that. Let me show you some of the other numbers that we had. Uh, up at Breck, peak 803, 98. Eight at Tabernash and Loveland Pass at 80 miles per hour. They're still blowing hard up there. Not quite as bad, but still gusting to 45 out at DIA at the top of the hour. The areas that are in the yellow still have high wind warnings and there's still high fire danger. You can see in the areas that are in pink and to the blue. That's all winter weather advisories. We will continue to have some of this activity out on the eastern plains. That is a slew of advisories going on uh, for tomorrow as winds will still remain relatively strong, but not as strong. Uh, the winds will diminish down by about half for tomorrow. Still some snow in the mountains, kind of a windy, cool Wednesday. But oh, you're going to love the forecast by the time we get to Friday and Saturday. All right, we'll just have to hold strong until then. Well, every person in America has a, a constitutional right to an attorney and to have private conversations with them. But what happens if those awaiting trial in jail have their phone calls recorded? Well, that is what happened in Larimer County. And now a Colorado attorney has filed a motion that could mean big legal changes to our system of justice. Denver 7's Rob Harris is here to break down the case and what it could mean. Hey, Rob. Yeah, hey, guys. So here is the backstory. The motion has been filed by attorney Jason Flores Williams. His client was arrested on drug trafficking charges last year. is being held on a $500,000 bond. Now, Flores Williams took the case, but in the process of discovery, learned that several calls with his client were recorded because they took place on the main inmate phone line at Larimer County Detention Center. So he's now fighting to make sure that not only those calls will not be used against his client in court, but also to end all recordings of attorney calls in jail, regardless of the line. It doesn't matter what they tell their attorney, okay? That is 110% privileged and protected, and that's recognized throughout Supreme Court law since the beginning of time in this country. Now, the Larimer County District Attorney says this is Flores Williams' fault. The jail has a separate, non-recorded line for attorney calls, and quote, as soon as law enforcement learned of Mr. Flores Williams' carelessness, they worked to mitigate his mistakes. This is going to be a trial they're going to be watching for in June. Guys. Coming up on Denver 7 News at 8, President Biden hits pause on student loan repayments. The Coloradans are still feeling the pressure. Loans are putting my, myself and my family in a complete deficit. By the end of college, I would be almost $120,000. And election deniers clash at the state capitol. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Those strong winds have really been whipping, but calmer conditions are on the way. Plus, we speak with Judd Apatow about his new star-studded comedy. I don't really have much to give the world other than a two-hour break and some laughs. 